Good morning, Rise fam. Hope you're having an amazing day. Um, as we continue on this 40 days of prayer and fasting, and today we are reading Galatians 3. If you don't know me, I'm Dustin Cooper, and I love y'all. Um, I help on the worship team, team among other things. Um, so my reading is Galatians 3, and I love this chapter. If you know me, you know it means everything to me. Um, given my background, this chapter along with four, when I hit a place in my life, it, it changed everything. So I would encourage you to read this chapter, read it some more, then read it again, then read it again, again and again, because it is incredible. Um, but I, I picked a little bit of a longer section because I really want to get the gist of, of what I think is so great about this chapter. So it's actually Galatians 3, verses 6 through 14. And I'm going to read it really quick and then just kind of touch on why I think it's so incredible and such incredible good news. Um, so it says, just as Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness, then understand that those who have faith are Abraham's sons. Now the scripture saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and told the good news ahead of time to Abraham saying, all the nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed with Abraham who also had faith. For all who rely on the works of the law, and this is, this is key, all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse because it is written, everyone who does not continue doing everything written in the book of the law is cursed. Now it is clear that no one is justified before God by the law because the righteous will live by faith. But the law is not based on faith. Instead, the one who does these things will live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Because it is written, everyone who is hung on a tree is cursed. The purpose was that the blessing of Abraham would come to the Gentiles by Christ Jesus so that we would receive the promised spirit through faith. If you know anything about me, you know that I grew up in a very legalistic environment very legalistic for the first 12 years. After that, I grew up in a much more subtly legalistic environment, um, but really until about 28, 28, and I'm 31, I grew up in a very legalistic environment, and I often ask the question, I don't understand what the good news is. Nothing makes sense. Honestly, the Old Covenant, the Old Testament seemed great. I could, there was something concrete and definitive I could do to cover my sin, sacrif the sacrificial system. Nothing about this seems great. Nothing makes sense. I don't understand what is the good news because it just seems like everything that I was taught was your holiness level, what you're doing right versus what you're doing wrong really defined everything. That defined whether or not you had a relationship with God. And I, I cannot stress this enough that that is not true. That is not true. Now it's really easy to go so... Are you saying you can do whatever you want? No, I'm not saying that, and I hope that doesn't come through this. But what I am saying is that you, right or wrong, none of it matters. Just look at the rich young man in, in the Gospels that Jesus encountered. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus, and you can't have that relationship without faith, then whether you do things right or do things wrong, you will fall, You it won't matter. And... So I always tell people they come to me and I had someone come to me recently at church and they said, they said, you know, I'm doing X and I know I got to be better. And, you know, I'm guessing that's your advice too. And I said, you identified what you said as something you need to be better at. That's between you and God. I'm not here to say that. What I will tell you is I'm not even going to touch what you were doing wrong or what you were doing right. Before I say, hey, where is your foundation? Where is your relationship with Jesus? How do you get alone and talk to him? Because what we often do is we think, okay, if I do X, Y, and Z right, then that will mean that I'm on a good path and I'm doing the things that I need to do to be a Christian, but that's not true. That you can't have that as your foundation. If you have your works as your foundation, you every time a storm comes, every time things go wrong, you will doubt yourself. It will lead to self-loathing. It will lead to frustration. It will lead to anger because you are trying to determine your Christian walk to foundation your Christian walk through your works. You can't do that. It is through faith. And what faith means is that you are going to get in to your quiet place, whatever that looks like for you, and you are going to seek God with all of your heart. He says that, seek me and you will find me. 
Don't do a bunch of good works and you'll find me. Seek me and you will find me. This is life changing. It is such good news because what it means is that in that quiet place, you will find, and I have found this in my own life, I could not figure out how to live my life right until I started getting away, stopped worrying about what I was doing wrong or right, and started just getting away with God for, for me for hours at a time. I would sit by the river, I would sit in my room, and I would cry out. That was what worked with me. I'm not saying everyone do that, but please get to a quiet place with God. Find Him. Find Him. And in that, that is the foundation. The behavior modification, the right and wrong, will be branches off of that foundation with Him. I cannot tell you enough for people like me. This It's so freeing. It's such good news because it means that we are getting into a place where we are just trusting God. I've already run a little bit long, so because I love this, this means everything to me. Um, so I'll pray. God, thank you for each and every individual watching this. I love them with all my heart. And I just pray that everyone today finds time to get alone with you and just learn a little bit more about you. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And it is you gave yourself for us. Help each individual today and tomorrow and the next day to find that place with you because it is in that place that the renewal process will explode forth. God, I pray for each individual watching this. I love them and I pray your spirit over them. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.